In this video, we're going to learn how to do ad hoc analysis with Fidata and DuckDB. Maybe we can even call it agentic analytics. Now we've done an intro to Fidata before, so check out this video if you've not used Fidata, but I'm gonna do a quick recap of how it works. So this is the concept of an agent, and it has, as you can see, four components. So we have the model, that's an LLM, that's where the questions are gonna come, and it's gonna then work out what to do with them it can call upon some tools so they can go off and do some stuff. And then we've got potentially knowledge, so some information that the agent can call upon to answer questions. And then finally, we've got the memory. So that's kind of keeping track of the history of what we've been talking about. Now, in this video, we're gonna build an app for a tennis commentator who's commentating on a match and maybe has an idea for a stat or some trivia that they'd like to talk about when there's a little gap or an opportunity to say it. So we're gonna give them a chat UI using Streamlit where they can ask questions. And then those questions will be sent to our Phi data agent and it's gonna be a reasonably simple agent. So we'll have our model, so that's gonna be GPT-40 and then we're gonna have our tool and that's just gonna be DuckDB. So the model will process the question and work out whether it needs to send one or maybe more requests to the tool. And then it will use the tool responses to help formulate a reply to the user's question. So let's learn a little bit more about tools. So a tool is basically a function that an agent can run, like searching the web, or calling an API, or anything like that. It's basically a function that can do something. And then where it gets more interesting is if we click through to toolkits. So toolkits are a collection of functions that work together so they can share some state perhaps. And one of the toolkits that Fidata has is DuckDB. So let's have a look at that. So DuckDB tools enables an agent to run SQL and analyze data using DuckDB. So it's kind of what you would expect and you need to make sure you've got DuckDB installed if you're gonna use this. You can see it's got a little example on the page and then we can see the parameters that you can pass in when you're initializing the tool. Where it gets more interesting is if we come down a bit, we can see these are all the tools that are part of the DuckDB toolkit. In particular, what will be interesting to us are uh, create table from parts. It can create a table from a, from a, if you give it a file. Uh, show table, so it kind of works out, okay, what tables am I working with? It's got describe tables, so it can kind of go and work out what fields are there for me to query. And then finally, the most important one, I guess, is run queries. So it's gonna go off and run queries and get the results back. So let's have a look at the code for our app. So this is the agents file. You can see we've got a bunch of imports at the top and then we're initializing our agent and we're giving it the DuckDB tools and there we're just leaving all the defaults. Then we've got our model. So as I said, that's gonna be OpenAI's GPT-40. I'm giving it some extra instructions here to make sure that it quotes columns in double quotes in case there's a space. I don't know whether this is actually actually necessary, but I found when I was playing around with it, sometimes it was finding fields that had spaces and it was just going over and over again, uh, keeping it with spaces rather than just quoting it. And then finally at the end, we're, we're telling it, I wanna keep the history of our conversation so that it can refer to stuff that it's uh, learned before in future questions. Now let's look at our Streamlit app. Now if you've not used Streamlit before, Streamlit apps run from top to bottom and on each action, for example a button click, it runs from top to bottom again and all your sort of local page state is reset. Now that's not so useful for a chat bot or chat app where we want to update our conversation after each question and then subsequent response but we also want to be able to see the previous history of our chats and kind of scroll up and see see what's been happening so for those type of apps the uh, streamlet has the concept of the session state and that's where we'll store the messages for our conversation so we initialize messages if it doesn't exist and then we render the conversation so far to the page because remember it's going to keep on coming round here after each request and then if we come down a little bit, we ask the user for, to fill in the prompt. That's written to the message state. So for next time it comes around and it's also then rendered to the page immediately. And then a request is made to our agent that we just saw. Its response is streamed to the page right now, but also written to the messages state so that when the next one comes around, it's still gonna be there. And then that's pretty much the way it works. We can then run it, so we're gonna use UV to run it. So we'll say we've got Fidata, we've got OpenAI, we've got SQL Alchemy, that's for the state. We're gonna have Streamlet and then we're gonna have Watchdog so that if we make any changes to Streamlet, it's gonna update the app. And then we're gonna run the, the app with Streamlet. And you can see it's gonna be on localhost 8501. 
Now, before we look at the app, our tennis commentator is a big fan of Jeff Sackman's tennis data set, and they want to explore player rankings, let's say. So we're going to have a quick look at the files that we're going to be working with with DuckDB. So we're going to do a select star from, and then we're going to paste in a link to a file on GitHub, and you can see it's got a ranking date, a rank, a player ID, and then points. So this is just for 2024. And then let's have a look at another one. So this one, we're going to paste in the players file, and we're going to get just one run. You can see we've got a player ID. So that actually links to that player that we saw in the other file. We've then got the information about the player. They've got the date of birth. Uh, we've got the country that they're from and a bit of other information as well. Notice in both of those files, the date of birth is kind of in a really weird format. This is not a, a kind of format that databases generally can process without doing some uh, transformation. So it's going to be interesting to see how it deals with this. Okay, now let's open our Streamlit app on the left-hand side, and then we'll move the terminal window over to the right-hand side so we can see what gets logged as a request is being processed. And we're going to start with our first question. So I want to, I'm going to paste it in. I want to query these files. We'll give it the rankings file. We give it the players file. And we say, sound good. It takes a little while and then it eventually comes back and says, yeah, that sounds good. Let's start by loading those files into tables. And we can kind of see it's gone off and done a create table from path for the rankings, create table from path for the players. And those are calls to the DuckDB tool. And then it tells us what do you want to do next? So let's say, show me the players who were ranked in the top 10 for the most weeks. And it goes off, you see it does describe table rankings, describe table players, and then it runs a query and gives us back the players. You might have noticed on the right hand side, it's also been running, showing us the, the queries that it's been running. And so we can see this is the query that it's run. You can see it's done a query off the rankings table and then it's joined it to the players table and we've got the results back. Let's ask it another question. So show the best and worst rankings of players as a table. And you can see it goes off, runs the query, and it comes back with a nice table of those players. Let's try something a bit more difficult. So this is a question that I was actually curious about. And I was like, I can't really be bothered to work out the sequel for this. Let's see whether the agent can do it. So I want to find the players who started the year outside the top 100. So at the beginning, they were outside the top 100. And then at the end, they were inside the top 100. And it kind of goes off and you see it sort of runs into errors and you can kind of see those queries coming down on the right hand side. But eventually it kind of gets there and we get like this list of players that it comes back with. Now let's then ask a follow-up. So we'll say, hey, can you get me the biggest jump at the top and just show me the top 10? And you can see we've got Jacob Fernley. So that's our latest British tennis hope. So he sort of came to prominence in the last six months or so, but 2024, he made a massive improvement in his ranking. And then you can see there are actually some other up and coming players on that list. So I think this is a pretty cool use for agents. And maybe we could take this example even further by giving it access to a database of the historic ranking so that the tennis commentator can do even more cool trivia. And as a reminder, if you're new to FI Data and you want to get a more detailed intro, you'll want to check out this video next.